Last week I upgraded my 2017 MacBook Pro 13 inch to the 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch. So in this video, we're gonna have a look at why I decided to upgrade now instead of waiting for the new Apple Silicon Macs that are coming very, very soon. So we're gonna have a look at a few of the differences between these two laptops, whether they're worth the upgrade, and also whether or not you should buy a new Mac now or wait for an Apple Silicon Mac in the next couple of months. Now, as we all know by now, especially if you're an Apple nerd like I am, Apple are getting ready to release a new line of Macs with their own Apple Silicon processors. Now, this is something they've been doing for a long time in things like iPhones and iPads. These all have Apple's own processors inside them and they do an amazing job. They are very, very fast. They enable them to get a lot of power into a small device. They are great processors. I don't know a lot about processors, but they do a great, great job in iPhones and iPads. Some of the iPads now, the iPad Pros especially, are a lot more powerful than a lot of laptops. So the processors inside them are massively, massively powerful. However, Macs still use Intel processors, which is why Apple are now starting in the next couple of months to release Macs with their own processors in them. This is going to be incredible, like genuinely incredible. There is going to be so much more power put into Macs than there is now, and they are already massively, massively powerful. They're also going to enable devices to maybe get even thinner. I'm not sure who would want them any thinner, but potentially a lot smaller. And they're going to be able to do some incredible, incredible things with them. Now, the first Apple Silicon Mac is expected to be released towards the end of this year. Now, we are already coming towards the end of October. There's apparently an announcement that they're going to be talking about new Apple Silicon Macs in November and then released sometime in December. I might be wrong, but that is what I have heard. So if you you are looking to buy a new Mac now, it is incredibly tempting to wait for those brand new Apple Silicon Macs. However, there's a couple of reasons why I don't think you should and a couple of reasons as to why I didn't. There is going to be a hell of a lot of excitement around these new Macs. There always is around a brand new Apple product. Look at the iPhones every single year. We just had the iPhone 12 be announced. That is coming out this week. but always around a brand new product there is a lot of excitement. It is the first generation of a brand new product and you have the opportunity to be one of the first ones to use that product. So as you can expect there is always that element of eagerness around a new product and that there is kind of the problem because it is a brand new product. It is a first generation product. So there is gonna be some teething problems. There's gonna be some bugs that you might not necessarily get on an already established model. So Apple have said that there is a two year transition period from now, from when they start to release these new Macs with Apple Silicon processors, to when they release every single brand new Mac with a new processor. So that is a big chunk of time as to when new products are coming out and things are starting to be put into place for the future with all future releases. And it takes these first generation products to start to get things right. Apple will learn from their mistakes with problems in the first generations and then they'll slowly start to improve them. It's like, that is how things start to grow and improve and get better. But what it does mean as well, as exciting as it is, a lot of the apps that you might currently use on your MacBooks, they rely on the Intel processors. So all these apps have to be rewritten to be able to be used with these brand new Apple Silicon processors. Now, Apple have released some software or will be releasing some software that enables this to be a lot of a smoother transition. It allows these apps to work with the new processors, but there's still gonna be teething problems. There's still gonna be bugs. And that is something that I didn't want to happen. Obviously, if you are using things like Final Cut and Logic, you're not gonna have a problem because these apps are designed to work on Macs, so they're gonna work pretty much instantly. But anything else you might use, say you're a Premiere Pro user, you might have a few bugs and you might have a few problems with the new processors, which is why, even though I use Final Cut, I decided to go with an older model instead of waiting for the newer models because 
This is powerful enough to last the next five, six, seven years. And by then, the new Apple Silicon Macs will have progressed enough, all the bugs will have been ironed out, and there will be enough generations of products, and Apple will have learned enough through making them as to how to make them work the best. So that is why I decided to go for the 16 inch MacBook Pro now, instead of waiting just a couple of extra months for a brand new Silicon Mac. Another reason I decided to go for the 16 inch MacBook is the brand new Silicon MacBooks are potentially gonna be very, very expensive. Now I know MacBooks are not the cheapest laptops in the world, but when you get a brand new generation of a product, think back to the original iPhones, they are all very, very expensive and they potentially get even more expensive. The iPhone 12s now are massively expensive, iPads expensive, Apple is a luxury product. But yeah, first generation product, I just feel it, it's best to wait, let it all settle down, let the dust settle, get the bugs out of the way, and then a few years down the line, that is when to go for the Apple Silicon Max. I should just say as well, there are gonna be a hell of a lot of positives, more than I can list out, because I don't know a lot about this sort of stuff. There are a massive amount of positives of Apple using their own processors. The power is potentially gonna go through the roof as to what these things can already do. They are already massively powerful, but if you look at iPad Pros, if you look at iPhones, some of the chips in those are a lot more powerful than a lot of laptops. So imagine when they're put into a MacBook, what you are going to be able to do in the future is just insane. So very, very exciting about the Silicon Max, but me personally, I'd wait a couple of years and go for a well-established model that is already out. So that is enough about processors for now because I don't really know a lot about processors if I'm being honest. But anyway, the reason I decided to upgrade my MacBook Pro 13 inch video editing, I do a lot of video editing. I make a lot of YouTube videos and videos in general, and I've started filming a lot more in 4K. And that means that this little thing, MacBook Pro 13 inch, as much as I like it, it's starting to struggle. It can't really cope with the high workloads that I have been putting onto it because it's not designed to do that. It can even struggle sometimes if you're doing a big project, for example, it can sometimes struggle with just 1080p footage and I'm trying to do more 4K footage. Even though 4K footage isn't yet the standard, that's still 1080, 4K footage is becoming more widely and widely used and available to everyone. So I wanted something that could keep up with 4K editing. So while I could edit 4K footage on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it did struggle and it did take a long, long time. This thing though, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's a lot bigger than the 13 inch, as you might expect. That's not a very scientific example, but this thing is an absolute tank. It just breezes through any sort of video editing. The first video I edited on this was full 4K footage. It was about 10 minutes long. It had color corrections, it had titles, it had everything. And it literally breezed through it. There was no lag when I was brushing through the timeline. It rendered incredibly quickly. And when it came to exporting it, it would have taken this laptop 20, 25 minutes, maybe even longer. And while I was editing it on this one, there would have been a lot of lag. I'd have had to wait for it to render, and then it had quit, and it had froze, and it has been a pain on here. But on this, it flew through, and it exported the whole video in five minutes. A full 4K footage video with color correction titles in five minutes. And this is the base model 16 inch MacBook Pro. This thing, as I said, would have taken 20, 25 minutes. So it is so much more powerful than this. So with this much power that is available to us now on a base model 16 inch MacBook Pro without an Apple Silicon chip, I don't yet see the need to wait for an Apple Silicon chip because this is just incredible. And this is a year old. So give it a couple of years with the Silicon chips, what is gonna be available to us is just insane. I cannot wait to see what happens with all these Apple Silicon chips and what does become possible because if I can export videos that quickly with this already, 
What's it going to be like in a few years? It is just incredible. It's mind boggling. I don't understand all this properly, but when it actually comes to using it, it does make a huge, huge difference. Now there are a few reasons as to why this one is more powerful than the 13 inch. Obviously it's a higher spec, so it's got more memory, a better processor, a graphics card, which this doesn't have. But one of the main things is, as you can tell, they're both very, very thin. Laptops in general are getting thinner, which means they struggle with heat a lot. This one, especially. Even if I was editing 1080 footage on this, the fans would kickstart, it would overheat massively, and the fans would be so loud that you, you couldn't really, if you were editing without headphones, you wouldn't be able to do it because you could all you could hear is fan. With this thing, as you can see, it is slightly thicker, which means there is improved airflow around it. There is also some more vents cut into the side of the MacBook 16 inch, which there isn't on the 13 inch. So again, that helps massively with airflow and keeping the device cool because if it's overheating, it's gonna quit, it's gonna freeze, it's gonna shut down, it's going to slow you down in your edit. This thing, as I said, just flies through 4K footage. It still gets hot, you can still hear the fans, but that is completely normal. It's, it's a laptop, they're very thin, and in a thin device, you're not gonna be able to get masses amounts of air as you can in say a desktop device or an iMac or an, a Mac Pro. Even though they are still very thin, the 16 inch is just a tad thicker which helps with the airflow around the device getting cool air into it through the sides and letting it out the back, which this thing can't do as well. The MacBook Pro 16 inch is just insane. It is a beast, it flies through footage. I do a lot of music editing as well through Logic and recording and it just has no trouble with it at all. This copes with Logic very well, but this again, it's just on another level and this is before Apple Silicon Macs are released very, very soon. So as I said before, who knows what is gonna be possible in the future on a MacBook and it's definitely got enough power to last for the next five, six, seven years, as I say, until those Apple Silicon Macs are well established and then you can go to one of those without having the problems that you might have while they are still brand new. So that is why I decided to upgrade to the 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch over my 13 inch MacBook Pro now instead of waiting for the brand new Apple Silicon Macs, which are very, very exciting, but I just personally think Maybe wait a little bit longer. That's just my views though, but they are gonna be incredible. Just maybe with a few bugs. One thing as well, I'm gonna be slightly controversial here, just on a side topic. The touch bar on the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Now I know this is not a new thing. It's on most MacBooks now, but the, the touch bar, I really like it. A lot of people don't. So uh, yeah, um, also the, separate touch ID and escape key is is brilliant. I'd rather not have them built into the touch bar, but now they are separate. I really like the touch bar. My 13 inch didn't have the touch bar, but I use it a lot. It changes for all your apps. I'm not gonna go into all that. You know about the touch bar, but I like it. I know that divides opinion a lot. So hopefully that helps you out if you are looking at buying a new MacBook very, very soon over the next few months and you're not quite sure whether to go for one now or to wait for one of the brand new ones. That's it for this video. If you like what you see, click that little subscribe button, come and be part of the channel, come and say hello in the comments and all of that. I have a brand new videos coming next week very soon on the new iPhone 12 Pro and if you want to see videos on that, make sure you're subscribed. So yeah, I shall see you all very soon in another video.